Hello friends, welcome to C to Learn. Wondering how can this ball levitate in air defying gravity? Is there any magic? No, it's science. The ball is levitating due to magnetic force. I have kept a magnet on a steel scale above the ball. Moreover, one more magnet is fixed on the top of the ball using both sided tape. See, over here. Then this is a thread, threaded in a needle. The needle is inserted inside the ball and the free end of the thread is fixed to a base using a tape. The two magnets exert a force called magnetic force on each other. The magnetic force can act from a distance. It's a non-contact force. Can you see the gap between the two magnets? Now. The ball does not fall even when I move a wooden stick between the magnets. It means the magnetic force is strong enough to pass through the wooden stick. Every magnet has two poles, north and south. Why are they called so? Because a freely suspended magnet always rests in north-south direction. The pole of the magnet pointing towards the geographical north is the north pole and the pole of the magnet which points towards the geographical south is the south pole. These are some of the different shapes of magnets. The like poles of two magnets repel each other while the unlike poles attract each other as you can see here. The poles of a magnet cannot be separated even by cutting a magnet into two pieces because the cut pieces again behave as independent magnets with two poles. Magnetism can be experienced up to some distance around the magnet. The region around the magnet where magnetism can be experienced is called magnetic field. To show you magnetic field, I have placed a magnet underneath a paper. And now, see what happens when I sprinkle some iron filings on the paper. Wow! A pattern of lines is formed. These are called magnetic field lines. Now you can see here that no two field lines cross or intersect each other. Their direction is conventionally taken from North Pole to South Pole. Thus, they form closed loops. Closer the field lines, stronger is the magnetic field. Since the lines are very close at the poles, the magnetic field is stronger over here. That's why you can see more iron filings are sticking at the poles. This image shows a pattern of magnetic field lines of two magnets whose unlike poles are closer, that is, they are attracting each other. See, the field lines of two magnets have come closer between the two magnets. This another image shows how field lines between two magnets move away when like poles are brought together, that is, when like poles repel each other. Now, have you ever seen a wooden piece attracting another wooden piece or a ball attracting another ball? No. Then what's so unique in a magnet that it can attract metals like iron or another magnet? Let's learn about it. A natural mineral called lodestone or magnetite has a property to attract iron. It's a natural magnet. This natural magnet is an oxide of iron. Magnet can attract other metals also like cobalt and nickel. Such materials are called ferromagnetic materials. All materials have magnetism due to their atomic structure. You know that an atom has a positively charged nucleus and negatively charged electrons revolve around the nucleus in definite orbits. Moreover, they also spin like a top. 
Due to the movement, a small electric current is generated. And as a result of this current, magnetic field is produced around each electron. Thus, each electron acts like a tiny magnet. But in most of the materials like wood, plastic, etc., the magnetic fields point randomly in all directions. Therefore, they cancel out each other and the net magnetic field becomes zero. So, such materials do not show magnetism. However, ferromagnetic materials like iron have smaller regions called domains. Let's take the example of this needle. In each domain, there might be millions of atoms. The direction of the electron's magnetic fields in a domain is aligned in the same direction, that is the tiny magnets in a domain point in the same direction. However, all the domains are not aligned. As a result, the net magnetic field of the unmagnetized material is almost zero and so we do not see magnetism in them. But such ferromagnetic materials can be magnetized. How? The simplest method is by stroking a permanent magnet on the ferromagnetic object in one direction, as I am doing on the needle. This will align all the tiny atomic magnets of the needle in one direction. In other words, this will align all the domains of the needle. And when this happens, the object gets magnetized and behaves as a magnet. See, now this needle attracts the pin. Thus, friends, in this video of C to Learn, we learned that magnetic force is a non-contact force. Magnetic field is the region around the magnet where magnetism can be experienced. Then we discussed properties of magnetic field lines. Then we learned that magnetism is due to atomic structure of a material and that the domains of a permanent magnet are aligned up in one direction because of which they have magnetism. So, wasn't it a great fun to learn with us? I am sure you must have liked the video. Don't forget to share it. And those who haven't yet subscribed, do it soon. Moreover, don't forget to click the bell icon as we will be uploading some more interesting activities very soon. Thank